Hello and welcome back to Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest here in Denver. We're really excited to have you here watching theCUBE where we're going to really dig in and unpack what's going on in the ecosystem this afternoon with Red Hat and how that is really impacting how their customers journey to AI. I'm joined by Paul Gillen, I'm Rob Streche, Rebecca Knight is floating around here. We got just a wall-to-wall -wall coverage coming at you all afternoon. So today we're going to really just dive into it and we really, you know, who better to have on here but Run AI. Run AI, been in the news, we're not going to get into that stuff, but really when you start to look at it, we got Sam Hayward who leads up marketing for Run AI and we're going to really delve into, because you guys had a, uh, an announcement, so welcome on board, Sam. Oh, thank you, Rob, really pleased to be here. So why don't you take us through the announcement that you had with Red Hat this week. Sure, so you know, run AI, uh, AI infrastructure management, GPU orchestration. We help organizations accelerate their AI workloads. Um, we've had you know, long and deep partnerships with NVIDIA, Red Hat, several others. Uh, and just last week we announced acquisition by NVIDIA. Right, and that's still pending and all of that fun jazz. So yeah, there's know. always, there's always uh, you know, some regulatory that you got to clear, but yeah. yes. So, so when, you've, when you look at a partner like Red Hat, how, how, how do you work together? How do you meet in the field? Or how, how is it really, how do people like work with Red Hat and work with Run? Yeah, so I think you know, taking one step back and then I'll kind of get to that. If you think about everything that's going on in AI, it's a team sport, right? Like yeah. what we're trying to do, it's big, right? And it's going to require the whole industry to kind of help make that transition. Um, and with Red Hat in particular, uh, really strong opportunities to partner because the Run AI solution, we run on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift Kubernetes is widely adopted within enterprise, so we leverage that. Um, and then if you think about you know, the development and the, the ML ops and all those types of things, OpenShift AI, and we just announced a new collaboration with Red Hat on that. So you know, on the top, you've got OpenShift AI, you've got Run AI doing all the GPU orchestration on top of OpenShift below. It's kind of a match made in heaven from a product perspective. Um, you know, we're all targeting the same accounts and we just work together to help move the customer forward, which is one of the things that's so exciting about the NVIDIA acquisition, you know, NVIDIA is saying is, you know, the customer is the mission, that's the same view we take, so we meet in the middle, uh, try to find opportunities in the field to solve customer problems and help drive this whole AI thing forward. So what will OpenShift customers gain from this collaboration that they wouldn't get from simply buying Run AI off the shelf? So what would OpenShift customers gain by their collaboration with yeah. uh, Red Hat? Um, each party brings a lot of different perspective uh, uh, and expertise to it, right? So when you start talking about AI within the enterprise, at the end of the day, the, the products and the technology need to deliver the promised capabilities, but, but what I'm seeing is enterprises also looking for deep expertise, right? And so, sure, you could go buy Run AI, sure, you could you know, go OpenShift, but bringing the two teams together and providing the opportunity for joint solutioning around the customer problem, that's a big value add. So, so there's more integration at that level, because I think one of the things that Run AI brings that uh, people are, always talking about, especially with sustainability in mind, is fractional GPUs and being sure. able to really bring that to uh, OpenShift. Is that some of where this integrations and how the working together is helping? Yeah, for sure, and, and, and I'll expand that a little bit for the audience. Um, you know, Run AI, are the, the people we work with, they typically show up with these two kind of diametrically opposed problems. On the one hand, they have GPU infrastructure, and when they put their scope on it, they see the utilization is really low, right? On the other hand, when they talk to their data scientists and their researchers, what they hear is they can't quite get access to the resources they need, right? And so what that speaks to is the difficulty and the complexity of scheduling and provisioning compute to support AI workloads, right? So what's one of the things that contributes to that? Massive over-provisioning. So let's say you have you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, whatever, a whole bunch of data scientists and they want interactive environments to support what they're doing in OpenShift AI. Um, you could give each of them an entire GPU, but that's a little bit overkill. Let's say for their development work, they need about four gigs, you've got a bunch of H100s with 80 gigs of memory. What we can do is take that one physical GPU and divide it into up to 20 logical GPUs and then give each of those logical GPUs to the developer. So this is, a, I imagine the cost savings would be massive on that. In addition to savings on costs, what other 
uh, payoffs do customers get from that fractional GPU allocation? Sure, so the, the number one thing is acceleration of their critical AI initiatives, right? Um, most organizations, you know, they have, you know, they're dealing with kind of AI everywhere all at once, right? It's driving business strategy changes, organizational changes, and infrastructure changes. You know, there's five key challenges in, in, in AI infrastructure, we won't go through them all, but the combined solution helps accelerate those critical AI initiatives, which is the whole goal, right? We're not, we're not there to help them save money. We're not there to actually help them, you know, drive higher utilization. What we're there to do is ensure that they have, you know, proper support for the critical initiatives and that they're confident that the way that infrastructure is being used maps back to their most highest priorities. And you work both in the cloud and on-prem, is that right? That's exactly right. So the easiest way to think about it is Run AI is kind of a bring your own GPU, bring your own Kubernetes solution, right? Um, and if those GPUs are you know, long-term leases in AWS, or you know, a DGX base pod in a colo, or a, a DGX super pod in a data center, we span all of that, and that's part of what makes the OpenShift collaboration so fantastic, is they also kind of bring that hybrid approach. Is there certain use cases that you see organizations really embracing Run AI? It, like, is it sustainability, is it like Paul was getting at, cost savings, was, is, you know, what are the main drivers where people, like you, you brought up the one with the data scientists. Right. What are some of the other use cases that people, like they think and they go, hey yeah, th this would be great, if there's a certified operator with OpenShift AI, let me go down this road. Yeah, so the, the, the main thing that we're seeing, it's, it's, it's in terms of use cases, it's, it's not uh, industry specific or anything like that, which is not what you're suggesting but it's how do we take this GPU infrastructure and provide, provide it as a broad service back to the business, right, that makes it accessible to most of the business and supports the entire AI lifecycle, including you know, interactive environments for development, including training, small training, massive distributed training in support of generated AI, and including inference, right? We support that entire AI lifecycle, and what we see is enterprises wanting to use their GPU infrastructure uh, to deliver all that, as opposed to having you know, some infrastructure for dev, some infrastructure for training, and some infrastructure for uh, inference. Do you see uh, training uh, moving toward the cloud in a big way, or perhaps even the other way? There's been a lot of uh, uh, discussion about whether AI training will migrate more resources back on premises. What do you see? It, it, it's a fantastic question. I think it's, it's, it's too early to kind of call what the trend will be, but what I'll do is I'll, I, I had the privilege of, of uh, uh, selling a company to two and spending a long time with Cloudera and got to spend a lot of great time with uh, Mike Olson, right? And one of the things Mike Olson says is data has gravity, right? Training is very data intensive. So I think that data gravity is going to have a significant influence on where the training workloads take place. So when you look at this and you, you see, again, you've been in the market, I mean, Run AI has been in the market for quite some time, and again, you've been around this market for quite a, quite a while. When you look at how people are embracing AI, do you see it not only for the generative AI, but you see it for the what we're now calling, I guess, traditional or heritage AI use cases as well? So, yes, I think, the interesting thing, and in, in, uh, uh, <coughs> NVIDIA CEO Jinsu Hang, he, he kind of refers to generative AI's the, the the chat GPT moment. What's happened with generative AI is it's it's driven AI into the the, the kind of uh, headspace, if you will, of, of everybody. But the fact is, machine learning has been around for quite a long time, right? Financial services were early adopters. Obviously, a lot of defense use cases. Uh, you know, a lot of consumer use cases for uh, uh, targeting and online and things like that. So what's happening today with the generative AI is really a, a, a foundational transformation, right? It, it, it really is, but it's, it's, it's built on uh, uh, all of the work that's gone before it in terms of more traditional ML, right? It's, you know, machine learning is not new. It's been out there for a long time. It's just what's happened in this last phase is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, what's involved in GPU fractioning? I mean, it seems like that you have to get pretty low level into the hardware to provide that capability. Do you do that? Sure, so I'll answer at the level I can understand it. Um, you know, what's involved in GPU fractioning, really kind of like in terms of what we're trying to get done, is to maximize usage of that GPU. Uh, how do we do it? You know, NVIDIA GPU operator is required. Beyond that, in terms of explaining all the technology, I'd love to have a follow-up with you at the bar. 
Yeah. But you do more than just that. I mean, you also do workload orchestration. You do actually some Kubernetes type functions as they relate to ML workloads specifically. Yeah, so you know, if you, <coughs> if you go back again to those two diametrically opposed problems, we've got less utilization on the GPUs than we thought, and we have teams saying they can't get access to GPUs. Like that is, that is problem number one, right? And we solve that really well and we solve it I think in a unique value driving way, but we've wrapped an entire platform around that, right? So if you think about kind of the five main challenges when, you, when you're talking about AI everywhere all at once and dealing with the infrastructure, the first thing is, again, how do you support those data scientists and make sure they have always on access for interactive environments to do the development? The second thing is most organizations are dealing with a little bit of GPU sprawl, right? They've got stuff in AWS, they have stuff in Lambda, right? They've got, a, they've got you know, they're running Cloud DGX, they've got stuff in a colo and a data center. How do you bring all that together under kind of a single pane of glass? Once you have that, how can you ensure that those resources are being used in a way that aligns to your critical business priorities, right? So we have an enormously powerful policy engine to drive all that, and then once you have all that in place, right, you think about the volume, variety, velocity of AI workloads, getting those scheduled and ensuring right fit compute, right, that, that, that real critical problem, we, we provide all of that. So when, when, I, when I look at it, and we've had a lot of, a lot of partners on, you're, you're kind of, I think, the first one we've had on this week that is, I mean, assuming the ac acquisitions, you will not be so small anymore, but, uh, you know, pending, but you're, you're smaller, obviously smaller than Red Hat. How has Red Hat been to work with? Oh my gosh, uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, the, I uh, uh, don't mean to get all you know, giddy about it, but you know, coming into this and preparing for the OpenShift AI announcement, it's, it's been literally fantastic, right? Again, we're a smaller company. Um, you know, we kind of have to focus on mission critical stuff, so some of the details can, can slip a little bit. So some of the things that needed a little bit of attention, the Red Hat team was absolutely fantastic at circling back and saying, we need to get this done, let us know how we can help. It's been, it's been amazing. What form do you believe the, the integration will ultimately take? Will we see run AI functionality integrated directly into OpenShift, or do you expect to remain a separate SKU? So here, here's what I would say. Um, it's a team sport, right? If you think about all of the technologies and all the vendors that are required to pull this off, it's a team sport. We're all still trying to figure out where the puck's going. Um, the mission is make the customer successful and do what's needed to get there. As we continue to learn and grow, those answers about what the integration looks like and the future of it all will, will become more clear. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting is that you, you guys are right at the nexus, and I know you were at KubeCon and think there's a lot going on in the open area of this as well, and that you've actually contributed back into that. Do you see that as also a, a place that you and Red Hat actually come together as well? Yeah, the, the, the open source uh, community is, is so vital to everything that's going on. If you think about all the innovation you know, through the years that has been driven, you know, including Linux itself, right? Open source is absolutely critical. Um, and, and open source in terms of you know, how do you participate in the open source communities, again, to drive mission for the customer is, is absolutely something we think about all the time. So the, uh, the training, model training world isn't just about GPUs. I mean, there are about a dozen companies that are working on hardware that's specific to training, inferencing, edge applications. Are you working with those companies as well? So, um, we take a, a broad view in terms of the technology that we support. Um, I can't get into roadmap right now, but you know, we definitely are, are wanting to support as much as the ecosystem at the silicon level as we can. So it's not going to be in, in, in video only? I can't get into the roadmap right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Sam, we really appreciate you being on board. I, I think again, you know, we, we look forward to uh, seeing what colors you're wearing next, uh, next time we have you on board and maybe a follow up with uh, you, know, you guys uh, to get a little deeper into how all the fractioning happens and how that works and how the operator works. But really appreciate you coming on board here on theCUBE, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you both. It's been, yeah. been my pleasure. And thank you for joining us for Red Hat Summit Ansible Fest, day two here on theCUBE, the leader in tech analysis and news. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs>